Hey everybody, I was going to get out and do my little intro like I usually do with the tracks uh, back over my shoulder, but uh, my wireless mic that my daughter bought me, I cannot figure out how to make it work. I'm going to have to experiment with it at home a little bit to uh, get more conversant with it. It's pretty complicated, a lot more complicated than a, than a guitar wireless. So... This is my intro. I'm going to do a little drive from Cameron to Warren uh, in that area out by the hot box detector where it uh, turns to the south and heads down into Mojave. A little cruise along the right away here. Pretty interesting little road. Again, this is somewhere that's uh, pretty much right alongside Highway 58. You can see the tracks almost all the way to Mojave, but the right away road is still pretty cool. So let's take a drive down it and see what's going on. Headed on a little cruise between Cameron and Warren. Gonna go on the high road up here because it's a little smoother. Need a high rail vehicle down there. wind turbines up on top of the hills there. This is CP SP370 Cameron. And there's Highway 58. You see to the left there. Cameron is where I did the first segment of my How Things Work in the Signal Department. I will link that playlist here. Well, not right here. In the playlists. Not sure what this guy is doing, just sitting here. He's past the control point. He's obviously got tracking time out here. Bush is moving around. It is really windy out here today, which is par for the course for Cameron. From here all out into the desert. It's probably no different down in the desert. Windy as hell. signals behind me are red, which means no trains are cleared this way. They were red facing the other way too, so it means there are no trains cleared in either direction. Uh, even if there were a train to come by on the uh, number two track, which is the closest track to us here, I am plenty in the clear. Speed limit sign over there, 30 and 35. That's 35 for passenger and 30 for freight. Even though we don't generally run passenger trains. Through here, we do sometimes. Mile post 371. Right around here somewhere, this is La Rose Creek and that is La Rose Canyon up that way. <clears throat> around here somewhere was one of the uh, telegraph and train order stations that they put in. It was the last ones to be put in. It was installed in 1916 and uh, removed from service 
and torn down in 1944. I'm not exactly sure where it was. There's mills around here somewhere. road does go all the way through but the one up high so that doesn't go all the way through you I used to have to pull in and then back up into that with my tools and meters and stuff to uh, test that location never had to do any real work there other than just testing thank goodness Younger, lived in Tashby, rode dirt bikes all the time. I loved riding these right away roads. You could ride all the way from Tashby to, uh, to Mojave. We wouldn't ride to Mojave generally. We would ride to the uh, place called Cash Creek out here. The place called the, we called it the arena. And, uh, We'd ride our dirt bikes out here, ride around out there for about a half hour and have just enough gas to get back to Hatchby. But these right-of-way roads are fun to ride on. I still, when I was working, I would still see people riding on them every once in a while and make me jealous. And there's another one of the entrances. You can come in from 58. squeeze right up here still in the clear as long as there's no rock slides okay. no trains coming stories about Cameron back there behind us but one of them was we had, were in a blizzard condition one night that wasn't really snowing anymore the snow had already fallen you could actually look up and see stars but it was blowing the wind was blowing so hard that uh, you couldn't see 10 feet in front of you and one of uh, my co-workers was stuck out at Cameron in, in the bottom of one of those creeks he just had a two-wheel drive not because it was muddy just got stuck down there in the rocks and uh, they called me to go help pull him out. And it took me from Tashby to Cameron is usually about a 10 minute drive, if that. And it, the, I got on the freeway, the freeway ended up being closed. I had to turn around and go get on the back road through Monolith. Uh, you couldn't see anything. I was literally just driving until I saw a fence on one side and then I would see fences on the other side. It was really really hard to see and I finally made it out there. It took me almost an hour and a half to get out there to him and uh, his truck was hopelessly buried in the rocks. I couldn't get him out. Uh, just picked him up and we went back to Tash being drank coffee and his heater had quit working too which was bizarre but <laughs> uh, good old days. That was about 1988. And off to the upper left there, you can see the uh, CHP scales on Highway 58. Another 
set of intermediates. 373. There is another entrance for from the freeway. If you're out there working, you don't have to drive all the way down these roads. You can just pull right off the freeway as close as possible. There goes the high rail vehicle. Must have got done doing whatever he was doing back there. Checking paperwork or something, who knows. Don't know what those little huts are. I don't know if that has something to do with the water or weather or what. I have no idea, but there are a few of them dotted out through here. This one was a blast on a bike coming this way. Hit this thing and just sail out to about here. But that was before I was old and wore out. saw earlier coming up here that the uh, concrete tie gang is working between Cable and Marcel on single track up the tunnels and that's why we're not seeing any trains uh, they're got what's called a window They give them a big chunk of time to do all their work. This is a little sketchy here, always has been. We'll see how the old F-150 handles it. No problem. Just gotta take your time, that's all. You can go over that way, or you can go this way. Looks like some bikes have been out here. place right there you can come in off the freeway. And before the installation of the Electrologic and microlock signal systems. Right here, after this curve straightened out, was some intermediates. It was one track was signaled in both directions, and the other track is only signaled in one. I don't recall now which way it was, but uh, there were three intermediates, one on each side of the tracks and one in the middle. And they upgraded the signal system to the current system. They 
change the braking distances and spread the intermediates out of ways and now this uh, next intermediate will be coming up on here in just a minute. See the size of those windmills, those things are gigantic. Uh, each one of those blades is, uh, I believe they said 30 meters in length. So those are a lot bigger than they look from a distance. Getting ready to cross uh, Cash Creek. This used to be a, a wooden bridge. They replaced it with concrete structure a few years ago. But uh, this is one of the places where we could ride our dirt bikes under the tracks. And uh, the water pipeline, uh, Mojave didn't have potable water uh, in the beginning. And they had a well at Eric which is about uh, 10 miles behind us and maybe not quite that far. And the uh, pipeline ran down and when Cameron, when there was a station at Cameron, it supplied Cameron and it ran down into Mojave and uh, supplied an actual water tank that was uh, there at Arroyo Road in Mojave. But that uh, water pipe was exposed, ran alongside the, uh, the other side of this bridge. And at some point, someone had poked a little hole in the bottom of it and there were plastic tubes that people always left there and you could actually stick one of those tubes up into that pipe and it would make a little spout and uh, we could get a drink out here yeah, so we thought that was really cool all right let's see if we can't make it across cash creek without getting stuck or tough I'm sure my GMC would have done that too, but it makes me feel better about spending all this money. Now this intermediate here was the last place when I was working that I did any major work. Uh, the uh, signal head on the other side over there, it's so windy down here all the time, those uh, the bolts get wobbled out and they break and the signals just kind of hang there. Uh, I designed a piece made of chains and turnbuckles that uh, looks like they must have came out and put these signals up. But uh, that was a real pain in the butt and then before it said done, I think I had end up, ended up doing it to both of those signals. think that the signal manufacturer would have a design something engineered for that to uh, keep that from happening uh, and charge the railroad a lot more money than it costs us to go to Home Depot and get a couple of turnbuckles but they didn't now, whoops look out there you see all the motorcycle trails that is uh where we used to ride our bikes that's uh cash creek the area we called it jackrabbit out there wanting to race and we rode all over these hills in the desert out here it was such a blast and uh the place i talked about the arena is actually over that way about a mile that's where we would actually park our cars if we uh trucks or whatever if we hauled our bikes out here which sometimes we did we do that haul them out here so we could ride all day long keep gas with us spend the night sometimes what a cool cool place and time it was to grow up so unlike today our kids are just on their phones and tablets and all that all the time uh, see that uh, all those trails Gosh, what a fun place this was. Okay, this right up here where this tree is, is where the station of Warren was. And it just
just set right back off the tracks. It was right there where those dead trees and stuff are laying there. Up until the uh, end of the 80s, for sure, the foundation and floor and the old cesspool were all still there when they came through and made some changes out here. I'm not sure exactly what they did or why they did it, but all that stuff's gone now. Uh, went out there, me and a guy named John Spark and explored around out there one day, hoping maybe we'd find some treasures, but but we didn't. This is actually coming in right here. This comes up out of Cash Creek. This actually turns into an off-road, official off-road, off-highway uh, vehicle trail. This is not railroad property, this is BLM property. And there's no fence separating the state property from the railroad property, but uh, for the most part, uh, people stay away from the tracks on their bikes and buggies. They stay out here on these roads. You know, when we were riding, we rarely ever got around the tracks unless it was necessary to be near the tracks to squeeze through somewhere. But, uh, out here and you want to do some rail fan shoots perfectly legal to be right here on this road I wouldn't suggest parking in the middle of it I'd get off the road a little bit so somebody can come by in a dune buggy and crash into your car or call your names as they went by on a dirt bike I liked working in the desert I liked working out here as long as the wind wasn't blowing really hard I didn't mind a good breeze but the wind is my least favorite weather to work in. I don't mind the rain, I don't mind the snow, I don't mind the fog, I don't really even mind the heat that much, but I hate the wind. Uh, it's really windy, yeah. you're exhausted at the end of the day just trying fighting to uh, stand up in it. Uh, you can't open a door in your car without it, your truck, without it blowing everything out. And, it's, it makes everything harder. It's just really, really a pain in the butt. But it's a desert, so I would say probably at least 50% of the time it is that windy out here. I've had a few times guys working out here and their hard hat blows off and it's gone. Uh, just go to the truck and get another one. <laughs> just, you're not going to catch that one until it gets to Barstow. bridge right there. That is where Highway 58 used to be before they made the alignment change and bypassed Mojave. And it goes over the um, Los Angeles Aqueduct right there. That's what it crosses. And the aqueduct is underground right here. Over there, you see that big cement block thing? That's a, a station for the aqueduct. You see those little dome-shaped uh, concrete structures? That is the aqueduct. That is to keep people from driving on it because it is literally right there. Another thing that uh, we used to be able to do when we rode out here was... Uh, there were little manhole look thing I mean they were manholes they're about six or eight inches in diameter and they just had lids on them you could pop those lids off stick a little cup down in there into the aqueduct and get a drink of water there those are all locked now uh, I can see why I mean back when we were kids doing that people weren't terrorizing things or being dummy all we wanted was a drink I'm 
not going to go all the way down into Mojave because there is absolutely nothing exciting or interesting between here and Mojave. All right. Well, that will conclude uh, the little cruise from Cameron to Warren. And uh, the little cabin here behind me, you see, uh, some of you might recognize it. Uh, equipment along the tracks. This is where I did start it. I did part of my how wayside detectors work, my box detectors and draggers and all that stuff. I will link that playlist in here along with Mojave is back down that way, a couple of miles, about a mile behind me. I don't know if you see the sign or not. I can't see it through the lens of the camera here, but is that that's where Aqueduct City is. I did a little uh, thing on Aqueduct City a while back. I'll link that in here too. Uh, anyway, uh, got a lot shot today, got a couple of cruises shot, and uh, time to go get something to eat. So uh, as usual, if uh, you have something you'd like me to do, some place you'd like me to go, something you'd like to see, uh, drop it in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet59 at gmail.com. See what I can do. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we'll see you on the next adventure.